Good afternoon and welcome to the March 9th, 2023 meeting of the Energy and Environmental Conservation Committee. Um, so welcome, I'm Sunette Cavalier, the chair of the committee. Um, once again, because we're fairly new as an organization, I do want to take a minute for us to all buzz through and capture names since I'm not very good at that. So Mark, I'm actually going to start with you. Uh, Mark Valentin, town engineer. Doug Sangster, town planner. Uh, Matt Prinzing, junior planner. Roy Green, member of the committee. Sunette Cavalier, chairman. Pat Schickler, member of the committee. Roseanne Cohen, member of the committee. Thank you. Um, and then one of the first things that I'm gonna get to do tonight is actually flip the agenda for a bit. Um, we had planned to run some standard items at the beginning, but we have some guests here today to celebrate, to recognize our community campaign action grant as part of a clean energy committee. So um, Mark or one of you, were you prepared to discuss what the recognition is for and then? Yeah, I mean, we can welcome them up to the table if they wanna um, come on up. Um, but there was uh, two action grants um, that the, the group uh, worked with. Uh, Sarah on and Sarah was uh, is out of town, but uh, was uh, sad to miss tonight's uh, recognition. Um, but they did two action grants, uh, one for uh, clean heating, cooling and energy efficiency, um, as well as electric vehicles. So the town, uh, due to their efforts and, and partnering with Sarah, um, has already received uh, the $5,000 grant for both of those. Um, so this evening we wanted to recognize them and uh, thank them for their help and their efforts uh, securing that funding. Um, and the town is allocating that funding towards electric car charging station. So one uh, to be here at the DP, or at the town hall um, and the other we're working on the four corners uh, waiting on our genie with that one, but to allocate uh, some electric car charging stations down there. So the town board has already earmarked that money has come in uh, for those, those efforts. So um, those are, Projects are forthcoming, but we already have the check, so thank you very much. And I don't know if, if Al or uh, Kitty or uh, you guys wanna sure. provide some comments. And yep. uh, Can you hear me okay? Yes. We had a wonderful collaboration with Color Penfield Green, the town of Penfield, also our Penfield Recreation Department. We spent a year uh, actually delivering courses for over the, the, the uh, four quarters of 2021 into 2022 to educate our residents on clean heating and cooling, installing heat pumps for their homes, as well as purchasing an electronic vehicle or a, an EV, a car, an EV. So they were great courses. They were attended by close to 150 total Penfield households. And we had several households that actually ended up purchasing um, doing weatherization installations or doing installations of heat pumps and also purchasing EVs. So we felt it was a successful campaign and uh, we also partnered with the Climate Solutions Accelerator in uh, Rochester, uh, their Heat Smart Monroe program. Uh, we had a representative from Heat Smart who actually presented uh, during every one of our clean heating and cooling session courses. So it was a four-way collaboration. Um, I really enjoyed it and I need to give a, a super shout out to <laughs> my colleagues here, Bob Knauer, Gaz Tilleman, and uh, Katie Rigg. Uh, several of us were actually instructors during those classes. So Penfield residents talking about the heat pumps that they've installed in their homes and waxing eloquent about the EVs that they're driving, including Teslas and Bolts and Volts. <laughs> so it was a great experience and um, we really appreciate your, your uh, recognizing uh, that effort today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the efforts that you put forth. I know that it has gone a long way to move our clean energy certification process forward as well as to get us some grant money, which is very welcome. Um, look forward also to continuing to partner with you for some other of our efforts. So I think they wanted to get a photo up unless yes. you guys are waiting through the end of the meeting. You that do was the, the intent or? was not to wait to the end of the meeting. So, so if, if we can wanna, awkwardly <laughs> figure out how to do a photo now, op. Chris can do his photo and... Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, Who great, you thank you. Congratulations. Members of the committee, if you want to be in it, 
folks. Where would you like us? We'll just stand over here <laughs> so we'll make sure the table is well, out of the way. Thank, Thank you very much. For Challenge can move to the front. Oh, Taller yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, I'll get on my tiptoe. <laughs> All right, we'll take a couple. Glasses off the way. All right, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Two more. One, two, and three. All right, last. Come on. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so that's uh, Chris Tanay. We just joined Frank Conservation Board. So that uh, taking the photo is Chris Tanay, our communication specialist. So Chris will put out on social media, uh, put on the website, capture that photo, and then. Obviously, thank them publicly for that, you know, as well as uh, share the photo and get that out to the, okay. the rest of the community. Thank you. And you are always, as always, you are welcome to stay for as long as you want. So this does not necessarily say, hey, get the heck out of here. So <laughs> please stay. Um, okay, now we get to continue on with the rest of the agenda in a normal cadence. The first thing that we've put in our agenda is a standing report from the Monroe County Environment Management Council, and um, I lost his name, which is not good to do. Daniel. Daniel. Daniel is the person who represents us. He is also a student and has sent us a note that says that he's in the middle of midterms. So we are going to honor his request to not be here tonight and just carry that one over for the, as our standing note for next time. So we get to do a review of any required items that have um, come on our agenda in the last month. The three areas that we have required activity on is in town development projects, requests from the town board, and then the clean energy community actions. So are there any of those that we need to act on? Uh, there are, so uh, we don't have any new uh, town development projects. We have two new planning board applications for April, but uh, one is a subdivision and the other is a redevelopment of a plaza building. So nothing we looked at that is trees, is EPODs, falls under those categories, so there's nothing or new projects for the committee to review on those tonight. What was the second thing, Mark? Um, was a redevelopment of a building in Parkside Commons. Um, so it's an existing medical office building. They're just doing a reface on the building, adjusting some parking, striping uh, layout with that. So didn't look to be any environmental uh, impacts with that. Um, but under item B, requests from the town board, um, from the town board, we are looking to uh, apply for a grant in LaSalle's Landing for a new bathroom. So um, Congressman Morelli um, has an opportunity for some grant funding. Uh, so the town board is looking to put forth that bathroom down in LaSalle's um, as a need. It's town owned property, it's parkland. Um, we currently don't have any permanent bathroom facilities. I know at times there's been a porta potty down there, um, but they were looking to this committee as whether this group was supportive and would be willing to support a letter back to the town board and obviously for the grant supporting that, obviously having a bathroom down there, one is a benefit to the community. Um, I had a couple of talking points that you know could put in there. Um, so say that the park is currently supported by a porta potty. Um, obviously, that's not as environmentally friendly as we can be. If we could put a bathroom down there that's permanent, um, tied in, providing um, benefits to our, our residents, boaters. Um, we do have a kayak launch down there for it. Um, it would also be designed with a, um, a covered picnic area on the back. Um, so we'd have bathrooms in the front. And I don't know if anybody's been to Rothfuss Park. We've got one similar that it's got bathrooms mm -hmm. on the front side and then kind of a covered pavilion on the back could get you out of the weather, get you out of the sun, have mm -hmm. a few picnic tables under it. Um, there are um, wetlands down there, there are floodplain areas, uh, but this area we're um, identifying or locating for it would be outside of those areas. Uh, so we did a overall master plan a number of years ago and Matt's pulling it up right now. Um, so this is LaSalle's Landing Park. 
and right about where it says LaSalle's Landing uh, Park is right where we want to put uh, this new bathroom in. So as Matt um, pull those up, it'll be just to the right of where that kind of the new loop driveway is. So it's a little bit more forward in the property. Um, there are some floodplains, so just to the right of where your arrow is now um, is where we're looking to, to locate that. What um, is the building to the left? Uh, the only thing out there right now, oh, the building to the left no, is No, the actually, whole, the big building. That's in Arundacoit, so that's uh, McMillan Marine, I think is the name of it. Um, so that's, the purple line is the town boundary, so that's Penfield and then going west or to the left on the screen is actually the town of Arundacoit. Um, so that's a, a marina uh, facility there. Um, so the only thing that we have is on the right side. So we actually we've got those three parcels combined together. We've got a, a parking lot. Uh, Matt's pulling up um, both the, the floodplain, so the purple reddish color is the floodway. Um, the tan colored is the floodplain area. Um, and then we've had the wetlands delineated in the past. So that open green area on the right would be outside of both the floodplain um, as well as the wetland area. So yeah, where Matt's highlighted right now is the area we've kind of designated for the bathroom. So um, would be outside of those. Um, it's also um, would be supported or is supported in our uh, LWRP documents. So our local waterfront revitalization plan mm -hmm. also supports having a bathroom down there. So make it more user friendly for uh, yeah, the community. Right yeah. now we don't offer any, you know, any comfort facilities down there for that and to you know help support that that park and hopefully. For so that will this tie into existing sewer system? We have, and the only thing that's kind of encircled by the green area is our pump station. So we do have a sanitary pump station down there um, where the jog and the sidewalk is. There's a little structure going a little further to the left. So right there is our existing pump station. Oh, okay. um, so that picks up both the marina, picks up some um, properties in Aranaquite as well as um, areas in Penfield. So we can tie directly in. There's a manhole there tie into the manhole. So it'll be on sanitary. Um, so we're not putting a septic system in, you know, close to the waterfront, um, tie into our pump station. Then that pumps across the street, so that's Empire 1, pumps to Empire 2, which is where um, K2 Brewery is right now. Yep. And then that pumps up the hill to Empire 3. Empire 3 is where the Water's Edge uh, apartments are, and then that pumps up to the top of the hill, which then goes gravity sewer from there. So we've got three existing pump stations. Okay. On Empire to it's all going that. uphill. It, well, it goes uphill to then <laughs> run back downhill and run north and then go to Van Lair okay. uh, over the sandbar outlet. And so the town would be taking over maintenance as far as cleaning this facility yep. so and would, garbage removal? Yep. So it would fall similar to here. Our, our parks department facilities, you know, would handle that. They'd handle, you know, the maintenance of it, uh, the care of it. Um, you know, but looking, um, you know, to Congressman Morelli if, you know, he has member money that you know he can provide us that would help you know us fund this bathroom. Obviously, we're reaching out to Webster. We're reaching out to Rana quite for letters to support as well because this yeah, obviously it's not a Penfield only bathroom. Once it's down there, there's residents from all over the area that would come and you know be able to use the bathroom. So we look to those communities as well for letters of support. Okay. Um, you know, that's, what size is the would the facility be square footage wise? Um, I don't have it. I think it was like a 20 by 40, so less than a thousand square feet. It's about. Did you say this was going? Uh, it has a pavilion already, or there's going we're to be. We're proposing to put a pavilion, pavilion and bathroom on okay. the ba back of it, so it would have a, a bathroom on the front, men's and women's, and then on the back would have a you know a small. So the thousand square portion. feet would encompass all of this, not yep. just the not just the bathroom. Bathrooms. Right. Okay. So would that have a couple? That be something you'd have. Oh. Would that be something you'd, you'd be able to rent out the pavilion, or is it just um, I think it would just be an open air shelter yeah. that oh. people first come, first serve, could sit at yeah. the picnic tables, be out of the weather if they're down there, be out of the sun. So I have a couple of questions on the design, and I don't know if it factors into the grant, but would there be any sustainability elements built into the design of the bathroom? Could you put solar, for example, on the roof and run the lights from it? Could you use a composting toilet? Uh, can you create it so it doesn't add to the uh, runoff on the watershed? Yeah, I mean, we can look at, um, obviously, solar on it. Um, the, we have sanitary facilities there already, um, so you're right next to the, the pump station, so we would just tie directly into that. Um, you know, we can look at and have done other, you know, stuff on the site, you know, as far as, um, you know, some sort of green infrastructure, putting in, you know, a biofilter strip or something as it 
you know, comes off the building, but, you know, those are elements, you know, we can definitely look to incorporate. At this point, it's kind of a, we're taking our shot if we may or may not get the money. Um, you know, it's been on the town's kind of radar for a number of years and obviously funding everything else. So just looking as many. Is there any feel for how much of, it will cost compared to the potential grant money? Um, don't know the grant amount. It's just kind of a, hey, what projects do you have? Mm -hmm. So it's just a shot in the dark. Um, we recently just bid out the bathroom back here at the softball fields. Um, the low bidder came out in at $476,000. That did not include the back pavilion piece. That was just for the street mm. bathroom. So this, we're estimating, would probably be about six hundred thousand dollars. So that's what we're going to ask for. Um, we'll see how much money we get. Um, you know, obviously, if they come back with most of that, then I'm sure the town board would allocate the rest. If you know the grant amount comes back and it's ten thousand dollars, then you know we may have to wait. So. So I guess the my question is more of not necessarily what we end up doing from a, could you put solar on it, great, but would it affect the grant? So would, is there criteria in the grant that allows for, you know, these sorts of features in it that is factored in the decision making on the grant process? I can look at this point, it's very vague. loose. It was very vague, it was just, hey, do you guys have any projects that are of need? And then, you know, there's a couple of different, you know, buckets that it can go into that they've kind of got pre-allocated um, areas, but we can look at that and, um, you know, see obviously if we had solar, if that helps our chances of getting the grant or do, you know, more environmental, um, you know, obviously that may help. So it could be. we can look to incorporate that. Okay. Um, decision making. Do, yeah. this is actually our first decision as a group. Do we need to motion and do formal? Is that a standard practice um, for us? You don't have to do a okay. roll call vote. Typically you just do a all supportive Okay. You can do I's and A's, and, but we don't typically do a roll call person by person vote. Appreciate that guidance. Okay, is there any, is, I'm just going to do it in reverse. Is there anybody who opposes us having the grant seeked out to do this project? Okay. okay. So we'll send that, I'll send that letter on behalf of uh, the group saying you're supportive. I'll itemize up, you know, the elements that, you know, we think it's better environmental and um, add that to the, the other letters and see how we make out. As I recall, when we were reviewing the marina projects down there, we, you know, big emphasis had been making better use of the, you know, the areas along there. So maybe when you're putting, as you said, it supports the LaSalle Landing yep. project and I forgot the official name you called it, but. Uh, yeah, we've expanded the parking lot. I mean, we've acquired the property in my time here. There was some, um, it was an old, it was an old welding shop or manufacturing shop, so there was some contaminated mm -hmm. areas. We had to clean that up. Mm -hmm. um, we acquired a part of it, and then we acquired another piece of it. Um, but we've already expanded the parking lot. You can kind of see the shade of where the driveway used to go. Um, but just the popularity of it, anytime I go by, you know, it's always packed down there. Mm -hmm. So it's a great right. access to the, to the lake. Well, to the bay first and then into the lake. But a lot of people, you know, launch out of there. You can go up right. around the Quake Creek and paddle out of mm -hmm. there. So it's not a a boat launch as far as backing up a car, but any, you know, pedal board, kayak, canoe uh, can launch out of there. And obviously it's, you know, very yes. popular. So having a bathroom facility there would be yeah, a Yeah, so emphasizing asset. that it fits in with these other plans may help yep. approval as well. Plus there's not a lot of public bathrooms around that area, which is a key, yeah, I think. I don't know point. if there's any other. I mean, there's, there's private, you'd have to go to a restaurant or something nearby, um, but there's no other public. I believe facility. the closest public facility is more porta potties up at Abraham Lincoln Park, which mm -hmm. is further up Empire Boulevard, because there's nothing at Lucian Moore and across That's the street, which is a up. county. Yeah, so it obviously park. could serve Lucian Moore and Park, you know, in that area as well. And, and thank you for your questions because they mirrored mine. So <laughs> I appreciate you asking them. Okay. Um, was there any additional town board requests? That was the only request that I had from the town board. Okay. Um, do we have any clean energy community actions? Um, I did want to share, um, I think we spoke at the last meeting uh, that we had LED lights out for bid. Um, we did originally for installation of LED lights as well as the purchase of them. Our first go around, we did get bidders for the purchase of them. Um, I'm not sure if they've been awarded yet, but we did get that. Um, we had no bidders for the installation or the replacement of our 
our LED lights in the first go round. Um, we just went through a second round. We did get two successful bidders. Um, so looking uh, to bring that to the town board on the 22nd. Um, and then hopefully the town board uh, looks to authorize that um, on the 29th. So we'll go out and get those authorized to then have a company that'll go out and start swapping out. We've been replacing them as they've blown out, uh, gone out, got damaged, we've been replacing them. But now the town board's made a concerted effort. They want to go out and start replacing them head by head. Um, so that is another um, uh, high impact item that would be one more step for us in our clean energy community. Um, stance on that. So doing those LED light replacements and the town board is, is uh, behind that and in support of that. So I would expect that they would pass that resolution. Okay. Thank you. Um, that means we get to move into old business. Um, the first item of our old business is the mayor's monarch pledge. And this is on the town board's agenda for next week. So Sarah had prepared the resolution. Um, she's confirmed with the town board that they want to move ahead with it. Um, so they've asked for a resolution for that. So Sarah had prepared the resolution before she um, went on vacation. Um, so I've put that in. That's gotten uh, stamped in this week. So that'll be on the town board's agenda for the ledge next week. So expect them to vote on that and move ahead with that. And then that includes a proclamation on Arbor Day. Um, so working with Chris isn't here anymore. Um, working with communications to you know do that proclamation on Arbor Day and you know get into those other elements. Okay. Um, in doing my research on it, I had noticed that it requires three actions. So the Arbor Day one is one of them. Do you recall what the other two that they're committing to are? Uh, let me check my notes that Sarah gave me on that. Um, I don't have it right in front of me. I know we were doing some modifications on mowing. Um, so I know we've been working with uh, Healthy Yards um, and then doing some modifications on mowing at uh, Shadow Pines. So alternating mowing areas every three years to, to do that. Um, I'm not sure what that third action item is, but I can have Sarah follow up with the group. Okay. So we can, you know, put this on again for next month's agenda because we'll have yeah, the I think we're, as resolution. Or not. Had, we've had these just kind of as, you know, these are our standard items just to make sure we go through them in mm -hmm. every meeting to cover them and then obviously provide updates when we have updates. You know, if we don't, we don't, but you know, we'll have we'll, so we kind of run through. They then, if, you know, if this resolution is passed by town board, they will have perhaps some action items for us. Yep, they may be can, looking for some other items if they assist. want to take take actions on and look for this group to provide support on those. Okay. okay. I'm glad to hear that it's progressing though because it looked like the first round or the round for 2023 is due by the end of the month. Yep. So that's why uh, Sarah had pushed to get that resolution in and that's the first step is to make that declaration right. and then once we have the resolution, get that in, get that in before the end of okay. the month so we're on for this year and then start yes. taking the other steps. And then we have the rest of the year to get the tasks okay. that we've selected completed. We just wanted to make sure, obviously, you know, the changeover with supervisor and everything else, Sarah's been mm -hmm. working hard to make sure, obviously, administration is still supportive and make sure we're still going that way. And the town board affirmed that they were, so that was good. Okay, so I appreciate that work. Um, Roy, had, had, had you had a chance to go in and investigate what that particular mayor's monarch? I read through it, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that's affiliated with National Wildlife Habitat, so that does give us a wide range of actions that we could work as a community towards. So it was, it was very interesting to read about. Okay. Um, the next item is the review of the GIS web viewer in ePods. And I think this was a continued item from last time where that area was fairly new to some of us. Yeah, and, and I don't know if Matt wants to kind of click through of them. We shared out the link uh, since the last meeting to the web viewer to, to look at those. Um, I don't think we had any specific action items on those tonight to, you know, to get into reviewing the physical areas of it, but I don't know if Matt kind of just wanted to show some of those ePods and, you know, what we have on our web viewer so as the public uh, goes in uh, to the viewer and kind of shows how you can access those items. Yeah. Um I mean, the basic um, note just to start with is just how to navigate it to from the website, just making sure that, I mean, anyone from the public can access the web viewer um, from the penfield.org page, just clicking that more section on the far right corner, and then there's a map section right there. 
Um, we have links to both the Monroe County GIS viewer and the public GIS viewer. Monroe County GIS viewer, you know, the, we use as employees to pull data such as the LIDAR for the steep slopes, but ultimately all of our EPODs are hosted on the public GIS viewer. Um, and if you click that link, it's gonna bring you directly to um, the, yeah, the Penfield Public GIS Viewer. And just a disclaimer off the bat, click OK there. Um, and all of the, the layers that we publicly host are on the left-hand side. Um, and uh, you can see just on the top here, there's some EPODs listed right there, but a, an easy way to just filter exactly what you wanna see in terms of EPOD, if you click that, um, magnifying glass there, and then you just type in EPOD. It's gonna filter just the EPOD layers so that you can look at any one of those. Um, just kind of going through in order of those, um, the, um, the wetland protection overlay district, um, that's where we're pulling data from New York State DEC. So if I activate that layer, you'll see um, if I also just drop down that menu will show you how it's symbolized here with the, the layers there. Um, but that's how New York State has delineated those. And then you also have a 100 foot buffer and then a 500 foot buffer check zone for every one of those uh, New York State DC wetlands. Um, and so um, whenever there's a, you know, obviously a property or, you know, um, development that's near one of these, it would, you know, trigger um, uh, this committee to uh, potentially review it. Um, the next one being steep slope. And so I'm just gonna deactivate those wetland layers just to help with viewing that. Um, and then we have our steep slope layer. And again, this is all, LIDAR imagery that we pre-process to remove any of the you know, vegetation or buildings, and then you're just looking at uh, that, um, basically the red area is representing a 15% um, slope. So that's, um, if you're not familiar with it, that's a measure of rise over run. So you can have a percent slope over 100%. It uh, just means that you have a rise greater than your run. So um, uh, but ultimately, we defined it as just that 15% uh, slope is what we, and higher, is going to be um, something we consider uh, a steep slope. Um, and then from there, we have the floodplain protection overlay district. Um, and these come from FEMA. And so uh, just starting with um, uh, this here, and I'll zoom in a little bit just to kind of better visualize it, but you're, you're looking at the floodway, which is just um, the water course. So that's your stream or your, your running water um, uh, visualized in red here. And then the 100 year floodplain uh, in that you know, kind of tan yellowish and then the 500 year floodplain being in green. Um, and um, uh, I know that, you know, we had talked about um, how often these are reviewed. Um, and we get uh, reviews from um, uh, the FEMA site, and they do have um, a map that actually looks uh, quite a bit like our, it's essentially the same exact app that we have um, that they're using, but there is um, certain areas that are under preliminary review um, that FEMA is looking at that are in our area. Um, this was issued last September where FEMA is considering um, a preliminary view of a couple of our um, uh, floodplains. Um, but uh, like I said, it's, it's under preliminary review, so there's really not much. Um, I mean, they specifically state that um, they have not been issued to the community for review or comment, um, and that uh, a letter of final determination um, is sent to the community once it's been effectively uh, accepted by FEMA, and then um, the community would have six months uh, to kind of adapt um, um, new uh, floodplain um, management policy based on that. And these um, ones have been related to waterfront areas? Yeah. So after the 2017-18 high water uh, wave action, high water lake levels, 
made them kind of stop and take a look at those waterfront areas. So that's why ours, the only piece we've got is the lower end of Verandacoit Bay, um, just as it kind of ties into that. But you can see all the rest of them are kind of tied up right along that Lake Ontario shoreline areas where all those mm. preliminary panels are. So we're not expecting any other changes within our floodplain in the community, but they're just looking at, you know, wave action and then the high water levels kind of along those waterfront areas. So those are what yes. these, these preliminary areas are looking at. Exactly, so the, the preliminary areas are these, it's not too much of a, you know, distinction between the two colors, but you kind of have those more purple panels and then the red is what is still effectively using the data that we've already built our EPODs off of. Um, so yeah, it's, um, as Mark was saying, it's not affecting much of Penfield, but it is um, basically those two panels there that are under that preliminary review. Um, and then if we go back into, uh, we, go. Uh, we also have, so um, that was just the flood hazard areas, um, EPOD layer, there's also um, the base flood elevations. So at any one of these um, lines here, you've got your um, base flood elevation um, measurement. So at that level is the, the base flood. And that's again comes from FEMA. Um, and that's the, the elevation in which um, uh, you, that, that base flood is being considered. Um, it would you know, trigger a review. Um, then there's also, I mean, the firm panels is essentially uh, those same um, panels that we are seeing on the FEMA flood panel map. Um, so um, we probably wouldn't really be looking at that and those don't generally change, um, but that's just um, an understanding of what those firm panels are. Um, and yeah, so that is uh, available there if we need to. I mean, obviously that would also let us know um, those areas that are under preliminary review um, from FEMA. Um, so that would cover those. Why does that purple line go the whole way down, around, and up? Oh, it's sorry. kind of very linear. Uh, this one here is just the uh, Penfield town line. Oh, okay. So, yeah, sorry. Okay. So if Making I zoom out sure a little I was bit, like yeah, thinking, sorry. Whoa, what was right, that? No, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's just the outline of the town. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, just to show, because I know that um, the base flood plains, that's, you know, also thin purple lines, but that's um, uh, essentially you'll see that those base elevations go entirely across your flood plain. So that's... Um, you know, you'll see some kind of going across outside of the town line, but that's just because the data spans outside of um, our town. Um, so Matt, I have a question on yeah. the LIDAR. Does it tell you the date when the LIDAR was taken? Yeah, so the, the most recent data that the county provided was 2017. Um, and again, I mean, it's the data comes to us already resampled to you know filter out the the buildings and and all of that um and uh yeah so um uh, yeah um that would be the most recent lidar data that we have okay well i, f I appreciate that review um um i would say like the only other ones that we have oh the streams um so the water course yep uh, it's just a simple buffer of all the streams that are mapped out by the DC. Um, and so that's 75 feet on either side of the center line of the stream. Um, let me just show you that here. Um, and that's just what the layer looks like activated. Um, and then um, the last one being the woodland um, or the EPOD woods and um, you know, so this was just chosen of um, areas of Penfield with five or more contiguous acres of woodlot. Um, and um, yeah, so the, here we just have all those areas visualized here with the, the boundaries. This one doesn't have any sort of, you know, buffer zone. It is just, um, if I actually, um, one thing that is helpful if you ever need to, if you are looking at the public GIS viewer, um, 
there's this panel up in the top right. Obviously, we were just kind of looking through the different layers, but if you want to look at aerial imagery, uh, you can choose your, your base, mass, base map section uh, in the center top here. If I hover over it a little bit, it will show you that. Um, but here you have um, the 2021 aerial imagery and you can you know, more clearly see that you know, this area is over you know, woodland areas. Um, but yeah, um, and obviously you can do that for any one of the other um, EPOD layers. But uh, yeah, that would be all of our EPOD overlays on our uh, Penfield Public GIS viewer. Very cool. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, um, the next item on our agenda, did you, anybody have any questions with that? We're good, okay. Um, next item of agenda is events and items of interest, starting with the EV car show scheduled for April 29th. Um, I don't, do we have any extra information on I that? I was hoping Bob was still here know, and Bob he could chime in on that. On I, us there. I don't have more than, than the data. Yes. Okay. You know, Bob and crew, I don't know how many years running, but it's got to be at least 15 or more that they've mm. been doing it. And every year they seem to add another car type style. Um, I know they've, you know, had people say test driving before. A lot of people just bring their own. Um, but I know he's had dealers come in the past and bring some of the new models and types that are out there. So uh, it's a great event if anybody. Is that at the community center? Yep, yeah. so that's at the community center on, on the 29th. Okay, and then the Shadow Pines update, which I do believe you'll have more information that on. That one I can come on. <laughs> um, so that one we've got a couple of different pieces and parts. So the town board um, has been looking at both the Clark House and the Clark Barn. Um, so anybody that's, and if you haven't stopped in the rotunda, um, the town board has been reviewing, and I'll start with the Clark House first. Um, so they've been reviewing options, what to do with the Clark House. Um, so whether, you know, what portions, pieces of the Clark House itself they are looking to, to preserve. Uh, so the town board is still has that and discussing on their agenda, um, as well as looking at a possible lodge on the back portion of it. So the newer portions of the, Clark House, it was built in many different phases. There was an 1832 piece, which is the front. There was a 1930s, 40s piece in the middle, which was the bar restaurant, if you remember that. And then the back part was built in the 90s. That was where the uh, pro shop was for the golf piece. Um, so the town board at this point is looking at the possibility of taking down the newest portions in the back and then preserving um, you know, what would be the Clark House itself, but then looking to put a lodge in you know, in that back area where the other parts of the house were, so it would look very similar. Um, that presentation was before the town board. Um, Bergman is working on that. They've been in a few times, shared it with the board. Um, it's taped and can be watched, you know, if there's others watching tonight. Um, they've also printed out boards that were here at the last public hearing. Those are in our rotunda right now, so if anybody's coming into the town hall, those boards are up on the wall, kind of showing what that look and, and style is. Uh, the second item under consideration is the Clark Road Barn. So that's across the street from the Clark House. Um, we've had some issues. We've got uh, quite a bit of deterioration with that barn. Um, part of the floor has collapsed. You know, there's a hole in the roof. Um, so uh, right now we've got some fencing around it, some signs up basically saying stay away. Um, but the town board would like some additional input. They've had a public hearing on it. Would like some additional input from um, residents. So they're forming a committee. So there is a resolution going in for the 15th to create a committee for the Clark Road Barn. We'll include some of the, the neighbors around it, some other uh, residents you know, across the community, um, town staff, as well as people that are experts in the area of, you know, do we need to take it down? Can we preserve it? You know, so they're gonna be looking at different options and coming back to the town board with a recommendation of here's what we think should be done with it, here's a prospective cost, and then here's how it could be funded through grant or not. So that. Uh, resolution will be on the town board to form the committee on the 15th um, and subsequent to that the board will be interviewing people so if there's those that are watching at home that want to send in their resumes you know uh, request to be on the committee um, you can do so and the town board will review those and then uh, appoint people to that committee uh, Matt's pulling up uh, the Bergman presentation which shows some of those um, first off the condition of the existing house and structure um, is why they're looking at taking the back part down. There is 
led through most of the building. Um, there is a lot of mold in the building right now. Um, mm -hmm. And as we, there are parts with asbestos in it as well. Um, that's the sill plates around the building that Matt's pulling up. Um, so there is, it's in pretty rough condition today. So we gotta look at how do we preserve it if we are preserving it. Um, Matt's pulling up the sketch. So it shows at the top kind of that 1832 piece of preserving just maybe the potentially the existing house and then the newer portions in the back that really don't have any historical significance but are still in bad shape, taking those down and then building, um, you know, a lodge is part of that. Um, and I think, so that kind of shows that back one slide kind of showed the overlay. So in blue is what the existing layout is for the Clark House and um, Pro Shop. The red kind of shows where a lodge would kind of sit very similarly to that. Um, our lodges currently are limited at 99 people. So we've got Harris Whalen as a rental lodge. We've got um, the Dolomite Lodge here is at 99. Um, that's set by the fire marshal and state code. We don't have sprinklers in either of those buildings. So that's why there's a maximum occupancy. So this one we're looking at, could it be bigger up to 150 people? So if you wanted to rent a lodge and have a big event, a wedding, something with that, you know, we'd incorporate sprinklers from the beginning. So Matt's pulling up, um, that kind of shows the floor plan layout. That tan area shows the tables, um, possibly with a, a covered porch on that outside area. Um, similar to other lodges, you know, would have, you know, kind of a prep kitchen, fridge, freezer, enough you could warm up stuff, not, you know, looking at a full on cooking facility, um, you know, but have enough area you could host a party or have an event there and it would be a rental lodge similar to our other two that we currently have. Um, and I think there's some different renderings as you get into it kind of shows. So this is looking from the existing parking lot, looking towards the facility. So this is what it potentially could look like. So in the far left is the uh, existing Clark house um, and then showing kind of similar using the dormers, using, you know, similar style windows that it would look kind of very similar to what it looks like today, but would be repurposed as a new structure and a new, a new facility that would be rentable. And then at the nighttime photo, this comes from the other side and shows a covered porch. Again, on the right of the screen is the existing Clark house. That would be the historic part of it. Um, and then kind of showing how you tie that together with a, you know, a modern lodge that you know, would be a rentable portion of. What would the like, middle portion be? It looks um, like brick. That's where the bathrooms are. So also looking to put bathrooms available to the public. Again, Shadow Pines doesn't have any public bathrooms. So there'd be availability both internally for if you rent the lodge and then externally on the other side, if you just happen to go to the park, you're playing mm -hmm. disc golf, you're walking the property, you'd have access to, to bathrooms, you know, from the public on the outside of that. So is that where the current abandoned, no longer used bar and restaurant was? Yes. So that would be, and so there's no talk of any other restaurant or anything We going. put it out and there were you know, many factors, but you know, I think the amount of disrepair the building's in and the amount of it money- It wasn't usable. It, we had no one that came forward with any, yeah. okay. any, we put it out to the RFP a couple of years ago and nobody Remember came that. back with any proposal at all. So I think okay. everybody saw the condition of the structure, how much renovation would be needed. It's on town property. So how much money do you put into a public facility and then lease agreements and stuff. So that didn't go anywhere. So that idea has okay. kind of fallen away. Um, Matt flipped okay. to the other side and that shows where those bathroom entrances are would be on the outside. So if you were walking in the park, you could access, you know, bathrooms on the outside. Um, and I think you had a- Would the Clark picture. House itself be sort of a museum? That's one of the items they're, they're kicking around is whether it's incorporated into the lodge as part of it and would be, just be other rooms access as part of that or whether that would be kind of a museum on it and then tied in with it. But that's what's currently pending before the town board right now and they're looking at is what are the costs of that? What can be salvaged in the existing house? Um, as you saw in the one picture showed the basement, it's a field stone basement. There's a lot of water issues in the basement already. There's mold. Um, so one of the items may be filling in the basement. Um, so that gets rid of part of it. You've also got to look at the sill plate is rotted out. So you got to lift up the house, replace the sill plate. Um, and then also once you put the public in there, if you have it in there, those are old steep stairs that don't meet current codes. Um, so there's a lot of issues you got to look at as how and what, I mean, one, if it's a museum, that's one thing. If it's going to be open to the public, 
you know, there's access issues and, you know, steep staircases you might want a, the house and a docent if it's a museum. Yeah, you and know, they talk whether that becomes the public history or a public, the Penfield history room moves in there and then they have a docent and can give tours of the house and that stays more preserved as a historical structure and then the lodge is just kind of mm -hmm. attached on the backside or everyday maybe usage. Or maybe there's an everyday usage. So these are the items that are, the town board is kind of kicking around right now. And then I think Matt brought up some pictures of, um, so that would be a, a potential nice. look of the inside. It's This is in a concept nice. form at this point, so this is not a final design, but just kind of a concept of an open view style and then looking at different elements of field stone or um, society not. Are you considering making it a LEED certified building or LEED facility? Um, that has not come up in the conversation yet, but something that we can throw that out. I say at this point, it's just a concept of kind of seeing where the community is with it, where the town board is with it. Um, if the town board decides to move forward with it, then obviously get into design and then, you know, those are elements to take a look at. What was the date um, of the Clark House again? The original uh, eight, piece? 1832, I believe. Um, <clears throat> but it's been heavily renovated. Um, so going in, they've already done some assessment of it. There are some portions of the foundation that were replaced, so there's some block. Um, obviously, there's modern wire and stuff in the basement. They used it as part of, you know, what was the, the Clark House, you know, back when it was a restaurant. Um, so there's our modern elements of it. If you go in and look at the walls, some windows sit deeper than others, so you know there's been additions, add-ons. So I'm certainly not a historical expert, but it doesn't look to me to be in pristine condition. It looks like it's been modified Mm -hmm. over, I mean, since 1832, whether by the family, whether by, you know, by others, it looks like there's been many modifications to it, you know, through the years. But obviously that's somebody would have to look at that for, you know, historical preservation or what could be preserved. There's talk of replacing the windows. If you replace the windows, you replace the sill plate, you fill in the basement. Obviously there's a tipping point at some there, some point in there where, what are you preserving and, you know, but. So is tearing it down an option that's still on the table? Yes. Um, and building a replica of it. So um, it's have they actually... Look, have they looked at other, um, or would be interested, I, I know as you're speaking about this, I'm recalling uh, buildings at Sackett's Harbor, New York, you know, where they have uh, one of the original founders, the Pickering House, and then they have... Um, it was significant battle in the War of 1812, and then so they have the Commandant's House and the Lieutenant, Con you know, they have different grounds there, but um, maybe that was a greater historical significance. Yeah, I mean, this is n this house is not state or federally designated. It's yeah. only it's only a local designation, so it's not. Okay. Um, I know the history room is looking at you know what more background. I know when I first went in there, there was a placard on the wall that had a little bit of background out the house and the family and everything else, but it's just a locally designated structure. It's not state or national. So that also, I would say, lends or hurts on getting, you know, historical rehabilitation grants or anything else. And I know those are hard to come by already, but if it's not state or federally designated, you know, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, I think last month you also gave us an update on some potential changes to the corner uh, where it yep. intersects Browncroft and... Yep, so we are and had talked with the board. Um, the town board is supportive of moving ahead with um, the pickleball courts. So at the northeast corner of that same property, um, looking at um, doing a parking lot there, um, a bathroom facility, and then looking at installing some pickleball courts. Along with that, you know, we'll obviously doing a stormwater pond, putting in some biofilter areas in the parking lots, um, doing some landscaping. So um, as of right now, it was the former front nine, kind of up towards that corner of Atlantic and, and Whalen. Uh, so Matt's highlighting that, that area, so up in that corner there. Um, that came out of the initial land use committee was if we were going to do some development on the property, try to leave the, the rest of it or the remainder of the property as um, natural as possible. And then, you know, if we were going to do any development concentrated up in that corner. So uh, the town board talked about it at their last work session, um, supported moving ahead with that. Uh, so we're finalizing details with uh, BME as our consultant on that and then getting the final permits from 
DOT and Water Authority and Health Department and everything else. We'd look to get that out to bid this year. Has there been any um, indication of where the access point would be, just given the what's going on in the, what is that one, the northeast corner of across the street? Yep, so um, as you pull it up on the screen now, so there'd be two access points um, we're showing that would come off of Wayland Road. So it's not on Atlantic, so it's kind of hard to see, but those light gray areas, so it's two driveways. So it'd be an in and an out um, that would come in and then you know, you'd have uh, parking areas in there. Um, the gray structure is the bathroom pavilion to the left. Um, and then looking in to bring in you know, the pickleball courts, have some shelters in there, and then showing some additional pathways that would tie in with the existing um, paths and trails that go around the property now, landscaping, and obviously, you know, we need to comply with our stormwater regulations or the state stormwater regulations. So you can see there it says biofilter rain gardens, so incorporating those into the parking lots to, you know, accommodate runoff from the parking lots. Um, and then a stormwater uh, facility to handle quantity, you know, as well as uh, water quality treatment. And then uh, we do the circles. Do the circles represent hopefully trees? Is yep. that what that intent is? Is yep. to get some so of the trees? So unfortunately, as we got to go in and grade the site um, yeah. in that select area, um, many of the trees, existing trees, would need to come down. Um, just as far as you know, getting access in, grading topsoil, um, but that shows those kind of symbolic circle um, show the amount of trees that we're looking to put back in. So that'll be right part of the bid is to replant, revegetate. Um, obviously, we need to plant the rain gardens. We need to plant, you know, the pond and you know handle the stormwater, you know, as part of that. And also looking at bidding it to alternates as two playgrounds. So you can see a tot lot. Um, and then another playground and looking to have those as be a, like a rubber surface playground, um, have those inclusive, um, incorporate some sensory elements, you know, some other stuff into the playgrounds for, uh, for the community. So you said the town board already has approved this plan? Yes. Okay. How many acres does that take up? of grading? Um, I, think we're, I think we're at 10 or 15. So a lot of and that includes, so there's some, open general field area. Um, so since it's greater than five acres, um, typically on our end, we review that for development that come in. We've got to issue a five acre waiver. So you're, in, you're clearing more than five acres of land at a time. That's a higher level of review. Since we're the town and it's our project, it had to go to the DEC. So it went to the DEC, they reviewed the project. So we as the town aren't granting ourselves something that you know, wouldn't be done. So the local DEC agency out of Avon reviewed the plan, signed off on, you know, the design for it and granted that waiver to, you know, to take on this development. Okay, just, and just out of curious curiosity, because it kind of relates to what we think our business is, does the town have a, a ratio of how many trees need to go in when trees come down? There is a, a policy that the conservation um, group had in, in the past um, that's not an official adopted code. Um, so it's just a policy that we pass out to developers. Um, the past town board did not want to adopt that as a, an official policy. Um, so it's just a guidance, guidelines. Uh, guidelines that we pass out to developers. And what do we tell them? Here's the guidelines and... Do we say go for one for one, go for two for one, I go mean, for some of the recommendation was size of the trees, if it's a larger size tree to significant replace... Tr significant tree based on the diameter and um, health of the tree. Yeah. Okay. So I don't remember what the, repla uh, yeah, what the replacement uh, guideline or was suggestions were. Species, species suggestions or yes, native? Yes, we, we, we have a native species list okay. that is included as part of it and the planning board takes a look so at so that. So is that something we want to put on our agenda for updating that policy and maybe pushing it to the town to maybe Sorry. adopt something <laughs> official? Okay, ooh, ooh, we're getting some feedback here. <laughs> okay, so I was just going to begin back with, this was part of pursuing um, tree, tree City and going to bring back where did we get with that because it was sort of wait back off the town. This was where we left off with our last two town board, or excuse me, uh, conservation board leaders. Roseanne, you jump in and you know if I'm yeah. missing something. And uh, we had, uh, in fact, I'm reviewing some old minutes and that, um, 
there was supposed to have been, um, uh, oops, I've got the wrong, uh, several of the committee members were supposed to be meeting with the town about this tree ordinance and we were sort of backing off on that and um, we did hear that the town passed that they did want to pursue Tree City or, and we are waiting to hear from some guidance from town board about are they pursuing the guidelines or code? Are they push, you know, are we gonna, we wanted to have input into this or at and least I think, rem your remaining members want and input. And I think we need to you know, re-clarify that with the town board. So last spring they said they were interested in looking at Tree City. Um, they did ask the conservation board to begin reviewing that. Uh, obviously there's been changes on the conservation board since then. There's been changes on the town board since then. Um, so we did have some, um, you know, some meetings about that you know, between staff and the conservation board to start looking at that. I think that's something we were looking to bring back on our April agenda. Uh, okay, because the, I think the meeting, um, you, you may have had some meetings with Jim and Bert, like one-on-one, -on -one, but the meeting that was supposed to be with Paul, Bert, and Jim, and town staff did not happen. Yep, so we were looking to bring that back to this group come April. We okay, we, so this is on our April. We just kind of started this month. We had some other items to get through. We had to, Okay, that's that's fine. I so just we haven't to, dropped it. Um, you okay. Know, we're looking to bring that back to this group. I'm, and, as I'm sitting here, my brain's cogitating on, through the things that we we left, so oh, here. the yep. things that so we had we were left looking off at with where it falls next. on the agenda, but you know, <laughs> okay. potentially April, get it back to the group ahead of that start. Just, just know, give us some direction we because we are wanting to not just say, oh, sure, you're on your own, town board, do Nope, and the board, town board was looking for that. Obviously, ultimately, the adoption would be to by help. the town board. Um, okay. You know, but they're looking for at least some, you know, general recommendations from okay. this group. And we can pull our, uh, get our tree policy out and make it available. And, and I mean, we'll, I, I we'll didn't bring off, it, we'll didn't bring it with me. We'll send off the latest me, drafts so. and send stuff out to share with the group to look Actually, at. Actually, I do have it with me. So, so that policy was in relation to Tree City USA. It was not separate from that? It's a requirement of Tree City USA. It was done USA years ago, have, years yeah. ago. So two different items. So yeah, one was the guidelines of, you know, if you're taking trees down your on your property was guidelines on the amount of replacement number. Um, the conservation board came up with that uh, guideline a couple of years ago, put it forth to the town board. The town board was not interested at that time of making it part of the policy or the code. Again, whether so that- That's what I'm suggesting that we may want to revisit that particular piece of it, regardless of Tree City USA. But yes, yes. So um, yes, part of Tree City USA is that there should be a tree- Policy. Policy, ordinance, I don't know, whatever you, I don't remember the exact language. It is not what we currently have. So, um, so yes, in, in either case, or at least to familiarize ourselves, you know, for for new and, and for us yeah, to no, go through it. it it's that. been a while since we did that, and um, yeah. So there's that, and um, waiting to hear that on the mayor's monarch pledge. And when you get to new business, I have some new old business. <laughs> Okay, I think that, anything else for Shadow Pines? That's all I've got. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for all of that information. Uh, and then our last item on that was old business was the clean energy community recognition. So we have completed that. I don't believe there's any other clean energy um, information. I actually have a bit of old business to slide in there. And that's, I think, an oversight on the part of me planning the agenda is the approval of the minutes mm -hmm. from the last meeting. So uh, we were all given draft, the draft version of the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I reviewed them, did not necessarily make any substantive corrections to them. So I just need to know is- uh, A motion to approve. Okay, motion Second. accepted. Okay. Any opposition to approving them? Okay, looks very the minutes thorough. minutes are approved, thank you. I will make sure that that does get added into my the top of the agenda going forward so I don't forget that in the future. Okay, and then the other item that I had brought up that I had, um, that I, well, there, actually there's two. One is just the recognition that Sarah did send us out a list of resources based on last meeting mm -hmm. of educational topics for us Let's to dive into. Um, I did wanna thank Sarah publicly for doing that for us. 
um, and just to see if there was any extra things that we had questions on or wanted information on based on that list. Okay, good, thank you. And then my third one was the note that last time we had at least mentioned Tree City USA and the process toward that. So um, I would just love the background and I think you've started to give it. There was some action prior to Penfield considering this and it just had not necessarily gone to completion. Is that what I'm hearing? It's been through some permutations with um, Catherine started, um, put in for a grant, and that's how we got the grant for, for Arbor Day, and we started looking at the requirements and um, I think it's it's an event. It's becoming um, having you know like Arbor Day. It is. Um, I'm speaking from memory from well, almost actually, a year I, ago. I have it. If you, you have do want it. the refresher here, it's, it's um, well, four it's, requirements: a tree board or department. Yes. A tree care ordinance, which actually seems very much more focused on the care of the public trees than yeah. on like the replacement component of it a community-based forestry program that actually has a budget, and then the Arbor Day observation and proclamation. Mm -hmm. And so on the, um, the ordinance, we have something, but it's, you know, it's not an ordinance. And on the, um, the, the Arbor Day, and I, I know the, the forestry plan, what was the first thing? The first thing was a tree board or department. Okay, so in many of the plans that were submitted that other other um, towns in this county, we, we because we had looked at several uh, plans from other counties, or excuse me, other towns in this county, and they had made their conservation board um, the they tree board. an arborist or somebody on well, that. Well, it, it was, it doesn't mean the conservation board has to do it. You know, you have oh, okay. to seek out um, the professionals to help you with it. And uh, uh, I'd have, we'd have to read through that again. We, okay. we have all the other towns. And as far as the forestry program in speaking with, I believe it was Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, you were there for that, the meeting where it was, um, uh, Jim Almstead and Tim, myself, Catherine, yep. and um, from what I was hearing between Catherine and Tim, there are currently town, as part of regular maintenance and process, items done or work done that would fit into this forestry, that it's not necessarily a whole entirely different budget, but perhaps calling out within the existing budget the items and the work being done to meet this um, certification. Yeah. My memory serves, I believe you had to spend $2 per resident on tree care, on and tree it would sound care. like that's a routine activity Our as well. Parks and DPW are always out trimming trees, taking down dead ash trees, you know, fixing up stuff in the parks. They were so. just on my street today. So I think it's a measure of just <coughs> documenting that. Obviously, they have general work orders that go out each day, and the crews go out and do their stuff. We would just need to document that, their time, equipment, what was done, and then, you know, I think, so it may not be a... a Specific just, just, um, tree budget, but under DPW, you know, we would just need to document just, that they spent how many hours doing tree work, used this equipment, planted so many trees, and then show that, you know, we spent the minimum $2 per resident, you know, each year as part of that. So okay. I think it's more of a documentation my, measure more than, than anything else. Yes, measurement. It was my impression from, wow, it seems like it's almost a year ago now, but it, might, it was my impression that we likely met that without any additional dollars yeah, other think, than I documenting. Think, yep, I think Tim thought that the amount of time and effort they spend and you know, even just trimming shrubs and trees before plowing sidewalks, you know, other stuff that they're out doing that stuff all the time. So we didn't think that that was a, a big hurdle to get over. So my feeling is that where we left everything was getting direction from the town board as to what they want this committee to do. Certainly anything that we did is subject to their approval, but before we um, 
you know, spend yep. a lot of time you know, spinning our wheels or I'll trying to create something that we get direction. Supervisor draw now and, and obviously get some additional direction and then can work with Sarah to, you know, work that back with this group and, you know, okay. April may be a good time to kind that's of start looking at that. I'm, I know that's a good tie Question. in between the two. Yeah, so what's the advantage of doing Tree City USA? What do we get out of it? Well, I think there was more grant money, possibly. Um, I think it's a nicety to wave the flag and show that you're a tree city. I think you show, obviously, you're supportive of it, but I think, you know, to a lot of these clean energy communities, climate smart communities, I think there's some grant opportunities once you're in and a member, then, you know, you may end up, you know, uh, better ranking for uh, some grant. And I think in these days of conservation and trying to get back to, um, pollinator, you know, and certainly the clean energy and um, Healthy Arts Monroe County, that if we are expecting or hoping for residents to model these behaviors, it would be a good idea for the town government to show that we are a standard bearer for that. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great program. I was just wondering if there's financial incentives for, for doing something like it. Well, and I, I, Catherine yeah. was the one that had all the um, information, but I believe, I don't know, Doug, I don't know if you know, if I, I thought there was, could be future grant money. Uh, yeah, I think um, Urban Forestry Program and um, has grant funding opportunities through it. Okay. Okay, thank you for that update. I, Did mean, I, forget I do anything think that's an important no, connection good. between the conservation component and the energy environment com mm -hmm. component is to make sure that we do honor some of the initiatives that you were working on. So, okay. Okay. good. Um, so that kind of completes what I had actually noted for old business. So at this point in time, is there any new business that we want to bring forward? This is my new old business okay. or my old new. We one thing that we had um, decided on is that we would have speakers periodically, um, since this is televised, that it would be providing um, source of information to to the public, and um, we did have Megan. Um, Megan Meyer come in and speak about uh, native native plants. Um, Mark, did we ever actually have you come? Did, we did have you come and speak, I believe. Um, boy, my memory's yeah, Mark, just yeah. shot. Mark spoke on on uh, what we do for stormwater stormwater management, and water. we had compiled a list of for future speakers. And I was just thinking, we guess we need to talk about this. If you want to proceed with this for speaker opportunities, they were no more than 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, so, is that to educate us or educate the public? Both. Yeah. Yes, one of our previous speakers was Hilary Mosier. She works with the Cornell Cooperative Extension. She came in and spoke. I know the Conservation Board, it was a few years ago, but on. Um, invasive species and um, specific ones that are mm -hmm. um, afflicting the Finger Lakes region uh, and what we can do to prevent the spread of invasive species. And since that time, I think we had formalized our objectives a little bit more to say that we wanted to do this more, you know, more periodically, you know, I, we didn't ever specify quarterly or three times, you know, twice a year, three times a year, you know, that can be, a, and even if we had, it certainly could be revisited for the time frame, but we did get a list of speakers together yeah, and we had a list of people that yeah, I don't know if you have three. access to Catherine's files, if you uh, can possibly um, find that. Yeah, I, I know we have it somewhere. Okay. And um, certainly we can add to that, but it, yeah, it was uh, our education and, um, Public education. We started to have talk on, or we had big discussions about leaf blowers at one time. Yep. Yeah, so there's one about. And actually, the leaf blower discussion got put over to yes. your committee, and now we're all one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember the leaf blower discussion, but. Um, I don't know. I, I, I know Jim one. talked to Bob Knauer and said that oh, yeah. it the, seemed as though the leaf blower um, leaf discussion blowers. belonged with your committee yeah. versus okay. ours. Electric we, versus gas. Yes. Whatever. Well, I think we can go ahead and really consider what Matt did as our educational 
<laughs> speaker for today, the review of the EPOD. So. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, certainly. It's not, yeah. as I said, it's not, yeah. a, it wasn't a requirement. It was, you know, having yeah. somebody in and saying, um, because I was just saying, you know, maybe we'd want to look at a fall speaker or, uh, and some of the speakers had fees. And so that was the other thing is to look at, did we have, how much is the fee? Do we have a, you know, does our committee have a budget? If we're not spending money on um, tree, get, tree and bush giveaway, shrub giveaway this year, you know, could we possibly pay for a speaker? Or will we just want to do volunteer speakers that will come in for free? Right. right. And right. maybe arrange for ones that are for fee to be something more more in line with the park and rec to be able to invite the community to come in and, and watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, they, the fees, um, as I recall, weren't huge fees, you know, like $50 or something. But sure, I, volunteer yeah. is what we were looking at. but. In I'm past, just bringing you up to date yeah. what, what all we discussed. In, in the past, we had advertised it out as a community event, so the community was invited to okay. participate. And you actually, did a, you have people come in and join outreach. you for those meetings? Did Yeah, I think we had a few. We, we had a few. Okay. When, when, um, when Healthy Yards, uh, Color Penfield Green came in, there was a few people that joined. and Very cool. I know when the um, environment and Energy Advisory Committee started, we actually had a tradition of taking field trips. So we did quite a bit of actually going to recycling facilities and we toured the landfill once and some of those sort of things so that we could understand from the, the waste perspective and the reduction perspective what kind of opportunities we had. The Penfield group of uh, Healthy Yards Monroe County actually has a list of field trips that we're discussing taking, so maybe, um, you know, I'd be open to that. So we used to have uh, Eco Park come in every so often from the county. Um, we had somebody from that facility kind of come in and talk about new things that were added to the recycle list or kind of do's and don'ts of what can and can't be recycled. So I like that talking. idea because I'm constantly you know, talking, do I recycle this? Do I, can yes. I put this in there? There's an app for that. <laughs> oh. There's an app for that now. Well, see, I didn't know Alexa we can be can sharing, can tell Alexa you can sharing tell things Alexa. like that. Yes. Um, I mean, if there, if we, does, if we are going forward with mayor's um, monarch pledge, perhaps um, we have a member on, um, on our committee that, um, is I guess we want self cast self taught uh, that works with butterflies goes out and captures the um, the capture what Marvel. are they called the chrysalis or and oh, put that's interesting. and put you know she has a she has a butterfly garden and hatchery and okay so I mean there are um, opportunities for volunteers and things to tie into what the town's currently doing. That sounds like something I think we'd all would enjoy as well as the town would take benefit from. So, yeah. Because I think she actually said she was out at Shadow Pines crawling around looking oh. under leaves for, you know, for, <laughs> for them to bring that. to her garden. Well, that's interesting. Yes. Well, did you have other old new business? Okay. As far as my brain remembers, that's it. That's very good. I, st <laughs> I appreciate that because I think that's something that we would would yeah, be worthy Daniel of pursuing. I think we need to make sure we get through a couple more meetings so that we know we can fit in our time. Sure. And then that would will definitely open yeah, us up see. to that. We're doing really well today, we? okay. so I think it's good here. Do you have any items for new business? Not today. Okay, Any? do any of you have items for new business? Mm -hmm. I actually have just one that's a little interesting one and that was that I got an invitation to the Home and Garden Show oh. that is happening Saturday and Sunday, March 25th and 26th. And it includes a significant number of green energy as well as other um, vendors that are promoting. Where is that? Um, it says it's the, at the convention Riverside Center. Convention oh, Center. Okay. So I was kind of very impressed with the list of um, vendors in terms of being able to educate the community on some options they have for for green energy and home improvements that are protective of the environment. And that's March 20... March 25th, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and March 26th, which is the Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, movement to adjourn.
Here we go. Second. Okay. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, we would adjourning this meeting at 5.44 p.m. Thank you very much for your participation.